ETS2 1.19 is upon us. It adds two new cities to the Going East space. It brings a ton of bug fixes, but the main thing it brings is the brand new mod management. This is going to affect everybody playing this game who uses mods. In this video, I'm going to show you how to migrate your profiles, how to install new mods, and how to prioritize them with the 119 mod management tool. So before you upgrade to 119, I recommend that for every single driver profile you have, you make a list of all of the mods that you have enabled and the order that they're loading in. Now I have quite a few driver profiles as you can see and I have quite a few mods. So this is a fairly tedious exercise, but it takes like 10-15 minutes. It's well worth doing, it's going to serve as a useful reference later. If I go into, for example, my TSM profile, it brings up the list of mods. Now bear in mind in 118, all of the mods are loaded in alphabetical order. This is why all of the mods have these kind of crazy names here, just to get things to load in this alphabetical order. So Zs load at the end. So what I did was I've gone through and I've made a list of all of these mods here that I've got and the order that they're loading in. I recommend you do this, you don't have to. And if you're not using many mods, then it probably doesn't matter anyway. But certainly for somebody like me that has a fairly complicated setup uh, with a lot of mods being used, then you'll definitely want to do this. When you're on the 119 version of Eurotruck, either the public beta or the fully released version, top left you're going to see 1.19 point something. That's the way to know that you're on the 119 version. If you scroll down to your profile, this is the one that we were looking at before, you'll have this new button here called Mod Manager. If you click on Mod Manager, it will take you to the brand new Mod Management screen. Now, this can look a little bit overpowering at first, but it's actually quite straightforward. On the left is the list of every mod that you have in your mods folder. This is the equivalent to the 118 list of mods. And on the right is every mod that you have currently activated on your profile. This is equivalent to you ticking the mod in the version 118. Now there are some big differences between the two. Most notably on the right here, uh, in 118, the game would load mods in alphabetical order. So the file name was important. So if the file name started with the letter A, it would be loaded first. And if the f another file name started with the letter Z, it would be loaded last. Now what that meant was a file, a mod that was named with a Z would load last and it would have a high priority. Because it loaded last, it would overwrite anything before it. Now what SCS has done is they've turned that on its head. Basically this list here represents priority order, uh, but the name is no longer quite as significant. I'll mention that in a second. But what you've got is a mod right at the top here is going to load last, if you like, in 118 world. It will overwrite anything underneath it. So as it migrates your 118 profile into a 119 profile, what it's done is it's put all the Z files at the top. And if you scroll down, you can see this is descending T, S, R, M. It's going alphabetically backwards down the list, all the way down to J, for example. Now, just ignore these two down here for a second. I'm going to explain those in a minute. Uh, so what it should have done is it should have migrated your 118 profile into a 119 profile. And if you click on any mod on the right here, which is a currently active mod, on the left it will find it for you. You'll see it's got a green icon next to it. If you click the helper, we can get some help about what these icons mean. So if it's grey, it means it's found it, it's in your mod folder, it's compatible with this version of Eurotruck, but you don't have it enabled in this profile. It's not active. If it's green, it means it's found the mod and you currently have it active in this profile. So anything that you see green here will be on the right here and it will load when you start the game. If it's gray, it means it's not activated so it won't load when you start the game. If you see uh, a red next to it, it means the mod is incompatible. It means it will not load. And same with the exclamation mark, it's a similar thing, except it means it's incompatible or you deleted it off the disk. So if you had a mod uh, that was active and you deleted it off the disk, then it will appear here as a red exclamation mark. If you, when you migrate from 118, if you see anything in this list with an exclamation mark, then just click on it and click the arrow here to remove it out of the active list of mods. So let's talk about how you make something active and inactive. Well, it's very, very straightforward. If it's in the active list here and you click this arrow, you'll see this is the mod down here, this one. This is Rust Map 1.5. If I click that arrow, you'll see 
it's no longer active, it's no longer gray. If I click this arrow back again, it will put it in the top of the active mod list. So there it goes right at the top. Now this is, you've got to be careful here because when you activate any mod now, if you, if you scroll through this list and you click on one of your old mods, perhaps I think to myself, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with my DS3 Mercedes Antos mod. If I activate it, it will instantly go to the top of the list. And that's where you've got to think, is that what I want? Do I need to decrease the priority? If you do, you need to click the arrow here and it will decrease it down to the bottom. And then if you click this button here, you can move it up the list. You can move it down the list. You can move it to the top. You can move it to the bottom. That's for you to decide on the mod load order. And quite often you'll have to look at the documentation that came with the mod. It may say to you, you must load this one before this one and it must come after these kind of mods. So if I just remove that for one second. Now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about this left-hand screen. It's got a bunch of things at the top here. Now what are these? Well, simply this here is the search box. So if I was to type J-A-Z in there, it would filter out all of my Jazzy Cat trailers. If I was to type, for example, M-E-R-C, it would look for any mod that had the word Mercedes in it like this. And this is how I can quickly find the mods that I'm looking for. So that's that's absolutely fantastic because if I install a new mod in the mods folder, I can very quickly find it, click on it, and then just activate it. And I'm good to go. That's so much easier than 118 scrolling through the list. This one here is for favorites. So if you was to mark a couple of mods, for example, as favorites, just tick the stars there. When you filter by favorites, well, what do you know? It filters the favorite ones out. Let's click that and deselect it. Uh, the category. Now, the category uh, and the sorting is only going to work properly with 119 compatible mods. So, with 119, SCS has allowed a mod author to put a file inside the mod that describes the mod. And this is the crucial change with 119. A 118 mod will not have that information, so you will not see a thumbnail. If you click on the I key, you won't see any information. There won't be a category, there'll be no description, nothing at all. With a 119 mod, and you can see one right here, with a 119 mod, it's different. The, the author can put a file in there and describe the mod. If you click on the information box now, you'll see it has a category. This is a paint job. It tells us who the author was, it tells us what the version was, and there could be a description, and there's a thumbnail. There could even be information here in the file that describes what version of Eurotruck this is compatible with. So the author can say, this will only work with 119, it will not work with anything before it. That's fantastic. If it's incompatible, it's going to show up as red. So the game can use that information that the mod author has put in. But because most of my mods, and I suspect most of yours when you go to 119, will not be 119 compatible mods, you're going to see a sea of grey. It's going to take time for the mod authors to put this information in the mods. But gradually, as you start to download mods, you're going to find they appear in your game like this. And it's all going to be fantastic going forward. Now there is one crucial difference with a 119 mod that has that file inside it. And you can see from the name here, you see how this says Neurotrans Deventer and this says R150 Scania underscore R underscore Streamline. This is the actual file name. So what the game has done, because this is a 118 mod which doesn't have this special file inside of it, it's taken the file name and used it as the name of the mod. When that file is present, it ignores the file name now and it just uses the name. When you put this mod over here, uh, the name on all of these active mods is now completely irrelevant. It does not matter. From 119, it does not matter what you call the files any longer. It is not going to matter a jot after the initial migration. When you're on 118 and it migrates to 119, it will use the file names to recreate this order. But after that, from 119, the file name is now no longer relevant. It will go off the order that you put them in here. This is the load order for the mods. Alphabetical, out the window. That's why now we can have nice names of mods and not have to put up with stupidly named files. This is a key change with 119. And of course, once you've got more and more mods that have this kind of information about them, you can then start to filter. So I could very quickly find all of my paint job mods just by clicking on paint jobs here. There is no different way of installing a 119 mod to installing a 118. It's exactly the same. You put the files in your mods folder. The only difference now is that there's information in the file that the game can use to make it easy for you to find view information about mods and this screen to help you manage them and manage the load order. Now, if you click the X up here and click close, 
This is how you commit or revert back. If you're not sure, just click on the X to make the dialog go away. But once you're ready, if you click yes, any changes that you made here to this list are going to be saved. If you click no, it will not make any changes and it will be as it was when you came in. So I'm going to click yes to that. Now I'm going to click continue and we're going to jump back into the game and hopefully you'll see that everything has worked fine. And there you go, I'm straight back in the game, no problems at all. If I click on the map key, you can see I've got TSM loaded. So this is TSM as it was in 118. There has been no changes. You may find that the game resets you, uh, resets your jobs, puts you, you know, reverts your economy, and puts you back in your home garage. If that happens, it's no big deal. The point is that all of your mods should have migrated and should have loaded in with 119. The the migration from 118 to 119 seems to be fairly seamless. However, if something goes wrong and the game isn't working, don't forget. Go back to the mod management screen, remove any mods that are flagged as not compatible, and if all hell breaks loose, get rid of all the mods. Deactivate everything in the mod management screen and rebuild the list one at a time based on the list that hopefully you wrote down when you was on 118. Remember at the start of the video, I told you to write that list down? Well, if you did that, you'll have that to go back to. So the new mod management screen in 119 of Eurotruck is a very welcome addition to the game. It's something that I've wanted in the game for a long time. Mod management in 118 and, and previous was just a bit of a pain to be quite honest with you. Having to rename files should now be a thing of the past and we can finally control the load order quite easily from within, within the game. Now it will require time for the mod authors to catch up and to migrate their mods to 119 compatible and uh, put the extra manifest file in there with the thumbnail and the extra information. But that's just a nicety. Most of the mods that you have in 118 should work out of the box of 119. 119 has not brought any massive structural changes to the game. It's basically brought two new cities and uh, some extra bells and whistles around gears and, and that kind of thing. A lot of fixes have gone in. Uh, but the main thing was this new mod, mod management. So when you migrate to 119, hopefully, hopefully your profiles will migrate across correctly and everything will work straight out of the box. If not, just remember you may have to do a little bit of tweaking in that mod management. Just remove anything that's flagged as incompatible. If all goes wrong, then you know just remove all of the mods out of your profile and rebuild your list gradually. That's what I would recommend you do. But I think that you should have a fairly smooth ride. And uh, yeah, 119 mod management is a fantastic addition to the game. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you now understand 119 mod management and what you have to do to migrate to 119. If you find the video useful, please remember to give me a like and uh, leave a comment. And if you've got any problems, just leave a comment and I'll try and answer the questions uh, as best as possible. That's it for this video. Take care, guys. Until the next time. Happy trucking.